So, Casey, one other thing to. Oh, apology. Do you have one of the worst experience with in the ring within eleven years as a vet? I've had a couple of bad experiences. <laughs> yeah. Would you, would, you uh, like to, would you like to elaborate that? I would love to elaborate on that because it has a message with it. To be honest with you, I haven't had that many, probably not as many as one would think over the course of 11 years, especially considering the fact that for the most part, uh, I'm working every single weekend and haven't taken much time off at all over the years. Um, you would think there would be a plethora of stories to pull here. Unfortunately, they're kind of starting to happen more now than in years past. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a namer. I, I, I don't drop names. I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus specifically, but, um, especially because it's, this pertains to more than one match. So one of the things that's happened to me a few times is, um, being put into a match and into the ring with a girl who was not prepared or ready to be in the ring. Um, and what I mean by that is somebody who did not train enough and didn't continue training or didn't train aggressively enough to the point where she was capable of being in there safely. Um, one of the things I preach to people is that there is a humongous difference between being new to the business and simply needing experience, you know, being green and being untrained. There's a humongous difference between the two. And when you put somebody in the ring who has not completed their training or who um, stopped training for whatever reason, um, or maybe they had a bad quality trainer. You know, I hate to see that happen, but we all know that it does. When you put somebody in the ring who's not ready to be in there, it creates a really big problem, not only for the participants, because that's a given, but it creates a problem for women's wrestling in general. It creates a problem for wrestling in general. It creates a problem for the promotion. It creates a problem for those fans and any fans who might see that match. And the problem that it creates is it reiterates people's argument who say that we don't belong in the ring. It fuels the argument that women aren't capable or that they're not good enough um, or that, you know, we're trying to exceed our abilities or that women's wrestling sucks and should stick to hair pulling and, uh, you know, cat fights and whatever crap you want to throw at people. And, you know, I've been in that situation with somebody on that level um, more than once recently. And it is beyond infuriating to be in that situation because not only are you worried about getting hurt, which is a very real possibility, no matter who you're in the ring with, you could be in there with a vet, with somebody who has been working longer than you and an injury could happen. So when you put somebody in the ring who shouldn't be in there, your chances of getting hurt just skyrocketed. Um, and it's hard to deliver a quality match when that happens. And that's what I mean by hurting the business and making us seem like we're incapable. Um, when you can't provide a good solid match, and I'm not talking about a match filled with high spots and gimmicks and, you know, like nonstop action. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the match I work, anyone who's seen me work knows a evenly paced, just old school match, solid match. When you can't even deliver that, you know, as a fan, why would you want to come back? If, if these same two ladies are advertised, you don't want to come back. Or if the promotion advertises another women's match with two other ladies, that fan is going to think back to that crappy match and say, they don't, they don't use good women wrestlers. I'm not going to go. It's just a snowball effect. Um, and on top of all of that, it's, it's disrespectful to the business. It's disrespectful to all of the wrestlers in the business who did train and who did put in the time and the effort to earn the right to be in there. Um, 
you know, to put yourself in that position when you know that you didn't earn the right to be and, and you're not done training. So that was a little bit of a rant and I apologize, but that those have been my bad experiences. Um, I can't say that I've ever had an issue really with somebody. I've never, you know, really had anything terrible happen to me in this business, but that epidemic is starting to really become a widespread spread problem from where I'm sitting. And I am only praying that I can do something to help curb it and help it to stop and that other people can and that it does because it's an issue. Those And that's what makes me upset and makes me mad at people in the business because it's people who are trainers or want to be trainers or whoever, you know, I mean, the girls don't book themselves. So it's just, it's a, it's a widespread problem. And to me, it, that's one of the frustrating bad experiences that I've had. That's like the worst one. And within that bad experience, you were mentioning about women deserve to be the same ring as the men, correct? Yes. And how do you feel now with the product of NXT's women's uh, division? I won't say Divas Division because it sounds ridiculous. It's just the word Diva, but I will say Women's Division. Like like the likes of Paige, of Sasha Banks, of Charlotte, the Bailey, the Becky Lynch, and then also up and newcoming uh, faces like Asuka, aka I know her as Kana from Shimmer Wrestling. Um, with those names. Like, what do I think of women? Women of, of that division right now, of women's. Uh, it, women in NXT, women in WWE. And also it could be women of TNA and other big promotions. Um, You know, to me, the names that you just threw out at me are all women who have earned the right to be in there. You know, I, I don't hear a name. I, none of the names that you threw out to me make me wrinkle my nose, to be honest with you, because they have all paid their dues, gone through their due diligence of training um, you know, bettering themselves, working on the indies as much, you know, and it, it's to me, they all are in a good spot and they are giving women's wrestling, you know, a very good reputation in the eyes of your casual wrestling fan who maybe doesn't go to indie shows. You know, there are wrestling fans out there who don't even know indies exist. Um, and who just watch what's on TV and that's all they know. And to me, that's a good crop of ladies. And they have Sarah Del Rey down at the performance center who obviously anybody who knows Sarah, and I've had the pleasure of working with Sarah a couple of times, anybody who knows her or is familiar with her work knows how much of a benefit that is and how much of an asset she is. And I think that has a lot to do with it as well. Um, you know, I, I think those women are all, they're, they're hard workers, you know, they go in there and they give it their all, they bust their butts, they have good work ethic and it shows. And you can tell because you hear the response and you see the feedback they're getting. People are excited by the fact that, yes, they're all beautiful women and they look beautiful on our TV, but we don't have to, you know, relegate them to just the gimmick matches or give them one or two minutes or something else like that. And I think that in itself speaks volumes and that's definitely a positive. You say you, um, you have the chance to work with cell Uh, can you tell us a little bit of experience working with the greatest, one of the greatest female wrestlers of all time, cell Yeah. Um, it was great. I got a chance to work with her twice. Uh, and I, I wish that she and I had gotten to work together more, to be honest with you. It was several years ago. Um, it was right around, I think, 2008, 2009 or so. So it was quite a while ago. Um, you know, and so I was still by my standards green at that time. And I was both nervous to be working her because I didn't want to mess up and I didn't want to you know, like come off looking unknowledgeable or anything like that. But I was also excited because I was getting to work with her and I knew that I would come out of the match better and having learned something. And that happened. The first match where she and I were involved, uh, 
in the match together was actually a three-way match, excuse me, up in Maryland. And the third participant was Mia Yim. Um, so that was a fun match to put together. Mia was way green at that time. Um, and then the second match that Sarah and I were involved in together was a tag team match where she and I teamed up against um, Roxy Cotton and Ashley Nicely. And that was again up in Maryland. So, you know, I didn't ever have a singles match with her. And I'm a little bummed about that because that would have been really like the experience to learn from her and absorb, you know, what she knows and to, to learn, you know, some of what she's picked up over the years. Um, but I was definitely thrilled to be able to work with her all those years ago. And just, you know, even those two matches, just like I was saying earlier, ask questions, listen to the, the why behind everything, listen to the reason behind it, the thought, learn and absorb it and be that sponge. And I totally made a point to do that. And I'm so happy that I had that experience with her. And then you also mentioned about Mia Yim. Does it feel surreal to you? You just wrestled these girls that now are in TNA, NXT, the WWE. It's like, do you have a goal to be in the big promotion? Of course. I think everybody does. Um, Oh, everybody doesn't. We know that there's people who don't. Oh, of course. Yeah. I've wanted to be, I've wanted to be there since I was that eight year old girl. You know, I, I told everybody that that's where I was going to end up. Um, and yes, I still want to, of course I do. That's, that's been my goal since I was a kid. So of course, and maybe one day that'll still happen. Nobody knows what's happening behind the scenes or anything. So you never know. Um, but I mean, does it feel surreal to me? No. To answer that question completely honestly, no, it's not. I, I'm, I'm taking your question to mean, do I feel kind of awestruck at, like, oh wow, I shared the ring with those girls, and and I don't, um, and that's not a knock on them at all. That's just, you know, it's been many, many years, and that's where they progressed. Um, you know, I was there watching Mia Yim train. You know, I was at the training center watching her train. And so I've seen her from literally the bottom go up and, um, no, it's not surreal to me at all. It's, you know, congratulations to them and good for them that they've been able to achieve it, but it's not, um, I feel like this answer is not coming off right. I'm not awestruck by it or anything. They're my peers and they're my coworkers who have done very well for themselves and I'm very happy for them. It's great for them, but I'm not like, oh, wow, I shared a ring. No, it was really fun and it was a great time, but you know, it's just one of those things. That's business. Yeah. And I already say what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's, I I'm, I'm coming off bitchy and I don't mean to be, I'm not saying like, well, no, I'm not awestruck. Well, I just mean, your, like, I don't look at it as like, about. you know, it's, they're my peers who have found success and that's awesome for them. You know, I'm doing my thing and they're doing theirs. And you were saying, bitch, he's like, no, that's that's you. You're the heel. That's what makes you the heel is the bitchy side. <laughs> and I am the queen. I am the queen bitch. Trust me. And also, I know I saw you, too, on television, on WWE. Uh, was it Raw or SmackDown? That you were one of the extras of the Rosebuds. Am I correct? You are. I was a Rosebud on two different occasions. And you would have seen me on Raw, I believe SmackDown, yes, and on Main Event as well. And in the Sonic commercial. Yes. I forgot about the Sonic commercial. The illustrious <laughs> Sonic commercial. What? Just that little taste, even though being an extra, would that give you more motivation to be, be within WWE? Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. I think so. The way that I approached that um, or the mindset that I had going into it, you know, it's always a good thing and a positive thing when you can be around people who are already where you want to be, when you can put yourself in that environment and you can, um, you know, just be there and be around it and say, OK, this is where I want to end up. 
Now it's time to be that sponge. See, it, it keeps coming back to that. That's why it's such good advice. Um, you know, yeah, to me, it was like, okay, I spent the entire night, the first, uh, the first go around for me when I was the rosebud the first time. Um, once we were kind of done for the night, for the most part, it was one of those things where, um, you know, most of the people I think went off to catering and were watching the show on the monitor. It was raw. And, um, you know, they were watching the show on the monitor and catering and so forth. And I plopped my butt right on one of the, um, production cases that they use to transport all of the, the equipment and so forth right behind the gorilla position. And I did not move literally the entire rest of the night until the show was over. And I did that because I wanted to not just, you know, watch the show on the TV because that's just like sitting in my living room doing it. I wanted to see how, how do they do that? You know, like, okay, so what are you guys doing now when this is happening? And like, how are you guys prepping for this, that, or the other? the production side of it. I'm, I'm all about that side too. And that's something that not many people know. Um, I'm all about that side of it too. So I was sitting there being that sponge in a different way. And I inserted myself into an area where I knew I was going to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff and things that you don't normally pick up on and so forth. And I did. So I still made sure I turned it into as much of a learning experience as I possibly could. So, so you're getting the, not only the as a wrestler and the valet experience, but also you're looking at the behind the scenes, the backstage politics, just to make to get all that grasp to become the better wrestler, the Casey Car Carlisle. Yeah, and not even um, the politics. Uh, you know, po I I hate politics. I distance myself honestly from Who politics. Who patience. <laughs> Um, but the process, really the process of, okay, we're in commercial. Whoa, look at all the activity or whatever the case might be. Um, you know, filming, like we would film some of the segments earlier in the day. And I was like watching these people run, you know, production truck and back and forth. I wanted to see how they made the show come to life. You know, I, at that point in the night, we were done. I'm not going to be out there working a match. Obviously, you know, there wasn't anything for us to do on the show with Adam that night. Um, this is the night of the Sonic commercial. So we had cut the Sonic commercial that was done. And we knew that pretty much we were done. There wasn't anything else for us to do. And, um, so I said, okay, I have no obligation. I'm going to use this time to my advantage and I'm going to be a fly on the wall and plot myself here. And that's what I did because I wanted to see the process of producing the show of making what we see on the TV come to life. Um, you know, and, and that's what I did. And I did it the second time around too, because I learned, I learned from sitting there watching and listening. While you were doing that, did you also see former peers or former friends that was, that's already in, in, in WWE? like say hi or like, Oh, it's great to see you again. It's like, how was things? I did actually. Yeah. Um, I saw one of my good buddies is a ref for them. D Edwards, um, is a referee for them. And I know him from, he was, uh, up here in the, I think he lived in Maryland, but we would work Indies together in the like Maryland, Virginia, DC area. And, um, you know, we'd known each other for several years and we're, like I said, he's my buddy. And, and um, so he was there and it was great to see him again. Um, and yeah, I did see, I saw a few people that I had just met at some point throughout the year. And it's a really quick handshake. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. You know, they're at work. I am too at that point. But, you know, it's one of those things where this is their job and they're at work. And so I wasn't trying to be all like up in their face and yeah, remember that time back in 08, we did this or that. Um, but yeah, I, I saw some people that I knew and it was really good to say hi and, and see them. And, um, you know, actually a tidbit that not many people know is that Joey Mercury, um, started coming up in the business just after Shorty did. And Shorty would assist with his training at times, kind of be his practice dummy and so forth. And I had known Joey Mercury 
from his years on the Indies when he was Joey Matthews. And, you know, I didn't talk to him at all because he was extremely busy. But, you know, to see him in person, obviously, I'd seen him on the Internet, on TV and stuff there. But to see him in person, I'm like, you know what, kid? I, Yeah, good for you. You know, it was just it's cool to be able to see. And that's kind of what I was saying with Sarah and Mia, you know, it's like good for you. You kind of, you know, doing your thing. And that's awesome. Well, here's a personal question just for me, because I'm a fan of Sasha. But have you ever worked with Sasha Banks or a.k.a. Mercedes KB? I've never even met her before, much less worked her. I know Mistress Belmont wrestled uh, Mercedes KV. She did, yes. I remember when that match happened. She a couple of times, right? I think. Yes. Because she was up that way. The reason why is like I know Sasha was around that area. It's like, well, and she's like, oh. I know she's from Boston, but probably she used to work well wrestle in Maryland. So like, I knew Mistress Belmont, and you also you wrestle with Mistress Belmont. So I just want to ask, have you ever wrestled with Sasha, aka uh -huh. Mercedes? Uh -huh. Would you ever want to wrestle her? <laughs> of course, yeah. There's, there is a grand total, I think, of three people. Yeah. Um, oh. Who I have no interest. No, I'm not naming names. Um, there's three people who I have no interest in sharing a ring with. One of them I don't believe is working anymore. Um, two of them are, but probably not for long so and will you say those two could be twins are they twins yes no they're not twins at all mm -hmm. oh i was gonna see the bella twins did you think you knew who it was <laughs> oh <laughs> no 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 actually nobody i'm referring to is anywhere near being signed at all so no 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 oh, okay making sure it's like oh, no 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 <laughs> All right, I'm going to wrap this up because I know you, you're, you're a busy wrestler and you have a busy actual life. So if any fans of Casey Carlisle, where can they find you? Casey Carlisle can be found online a lot. Um, I have two Facebook pages. One is my profile page, which is Casey Carlisle. Um, Facebook decides most of the time that my friend list is full and I can't receive or send requests. But every now and then I get one. So I tell people to try. I do allow followers so they can follow my posts. Um, I have a fan page, which is Casey Carlisle fan page on Facebook. I'm on Twitter at Casey Carlisle. I'm on Instagram at Casey Carlisle. I'm on YouTube, Casey Carlisle. I have my website, of course, www.caseycarlisle.com, um, which I just updated today. Cheap plug, by the way. And uh, my website is kind of your one-stop shop. I have my Twitter feed on there. I have all of my upcoming appearance information, um, match photos, my merchandise, of course, which is T-shirts, DVDs, and 8x10 autographed photos. I wish I could um, get one, too. <laughs> the 8x10. <laughs> I will send you an 8x10, no problem. Um, I just put new ones on my website today, so go check them out and tell me which one you want. But... Um, yeah, basically what I tell people at this point in time is if you Google my name and spell it correctly, you're going to find me. So that's the fastest way to get in touch with me. But I do my best to be as interactive with fans as I can be and respond to messages and comments and emails. Um, you know, I go through waves of being busy in life in general where I'm a little slower at times. But I always encourage everybody to interact, say hi if you want to. Um I'm a lover of my fans because without their support, I probably still wouldn't be here and have the success I've had. So I try to be very fan friendly, even though I'm that queen bitch. <laughs> All right. Well, again, thank you. Car <coughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Ms. Carlisle. <laughs> no photo for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. So uh, thank you, Ms. Carlisle, for being on the show. And hopefully I can have you for part two because I still have more questions, more of the I, in, more of the independent scenario, I should say. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll do a part two, part three, whatever. We'll make it a mini series. Thank oh. you for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you.